Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Here's an update what's going on there at Yellowstone. As you can see, the materials that's coming up from Old Faithful is really dark. And that's because, yeah, evidently the uh, magma is rising up closer, melting a lot of the materials that's under the ground, and making the steam quite black. They had a 2.2 earthquake, 29 kilometers northwest of Thermopolis, Wyoming. You can see it right there. They also did some blasting, which is dumb. Um, there's a rift through here. I don't know if you guys are familiar with rifts. Um, this is an area that the earth is separating. What they know now compared to what they used to know, they probably would never have allowed mining to go on in this area, and especially blasting. The one mining blast created an earthquake of a 1.7. It says it was two kilometers in depth. That's how far down that the vibrations of that blast affected the Earth. Another thing I talked about, the magma for the Earth is relatively very shallow all the way from up here going all the way down to Mexico. So this 4.6 earthquake, yeah, I'm sure it shook everything up going all the way up north. It was deep. It was 79.1 kilometers in depth, and that was yesterday. One of my followers asked about this activity that was going on at Maple Creek. This was a blob of magma coming in and lots of drum beats. Yeah, drum beats is the pulsation of the magma moving through the ground. And you can see an earthquake there, 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 um, two there, some small ones, and a more recent one right there. It looks like it occurred just after 1232 Universal Time or 632 Mountain Time. But as you can see, USGS did not report it. There was a 1.3 at Thomas Falls, Montana, but that came in at 1242 Universal Time. And that had a depth of 3.1 kilometers, but that was way up north. If you look at the Madison River chart, you see the same earthquake. They know it occurred. They just haven't reported it. Looking at the gas charts for Madison River, this is ancient helium and methane. Yes, a lot of release of that yesterday. And then looking at the spectrogram, like I said, that earthquake down there in Mexico probably had some effect upon all the lava throughout the whole area going up towards Yellowstone. And you see it right there. We got drum beats prior to that. This is ancient helium and methane. This is sulfur dioxide. The tilt meter for Madison River. And this goes back to 2011. Yeah, I think they'll have to reset it. It's off the chart. Here we have the spectrogram for Yellowstone Lake. There's the release of the gases. There's some more release of gases indicating more earthquakes. The tilt meter for Yellowstone Lake. Yeah, look how much it's tipping. That's indicating a bulge forming. The ground rising in one direction and just like a hill. At the top of the hill you have the rise and at the bottom um, yeah, it goes down. Look at the difference that's been going on the last 30 days. Here at Grant, you can see how pronounced the release of the gases was. The tilt meter for Grant. Now, this is near the area where they do have the bulge forming. There's two areas where the ground is uplifting there at Yellowstone Park. Back in 2011, National Geographic reported how this bulge was rising, how it took a deep breath causing miles of ground to rise dramatically, scientists reported. Here's a chart that shows the areas. We got Mahler Lake and Grant is down here by the southern part of the lake and then there's the Sour Creek Dome. So when you see the charts where it's rising, um, yeah, maybe I'll give you a little bit more understanding of where and why. This one here will give you an idea of the size, um, maybe possibly in miles how large the uplift is. This here goes back 30 days, shows the uplift that's going on. Here we have the gas charts for Norris Junction. Whenever it decides to finally erupt, which is eventually going to do one day, I talked before about how when we start having uh, magma flowing out um, horizontally, there's usually an indication between 30 and 40 years that the eruption, the recharging has started. Countdown to another eruption. But how long ago did the lava start moving horizontally? I don't know. 
of all the years that I've been watching Yellowstone, I have never seen Norris Junction show the coloring that we got here for ancient helium and methane. And this is sulfur dioxide. There's that release from that earthquake. Here we have the tilt meter for Norris Junction. And this goes back 30 days. And this goes back to the beginning of 2014. Yeah, I wonder what they're going to do because it's off the chart almost. Are they going to change the meter, you know, make it bigger so we can see what's going on? I don't know. You know, they keep saying it's going to be, you know, thousands of years, maybe even millions of years before we have another eruption. I don't think they expected to see this kind of uplift. You know, when Yellowstone does decide to go, there's nothing any one country can do about it to be prepared. Absolutely nothing. It would probably take a global effort of all the countries coming together um, you know, to do the emergency measures that would you know, need to be done. Well, put any thoughts or comments you have down below. Bookmark my site. I'll keep you up to date. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.